a little me, and I was curious to say the least. I remember riding in the car and looking at my granola bar, and on it was the logo of non-GMO. I had asked my mom what that meant, but as an eight-year-old kid, I didn't really understand it. Eight years later, after studying biology, I can finally understand and explain this to you as well. So what is non-GMO? GMO refers to organisms that have had their DNA altered. For example, there are around 422 million cases of diabetes in the world. Insulin, the hormone used to treat these patients, used to be derived from pig and cow pancreases. However, in 1982, due to genetic engineering, a new type of insulin became available to the public. This new type of insulin was created by taking an E. coli bacterium, or yeast cell, and removing a small circular piece of DNA, called a plasmid, and using restrictive enzymes to cut a small section out of it. The gene for human insulin is then inserted in the little gap, and the whole plasmid is placed back into the cell. This results in a cell being able to successfully create human insulin at a lower cost, and it is a process that does not include harming animals, which could be an issue for many people. Another example of genetic modification is wheat. Wheat is a very important crop, as 21% of the world's food depends on it. As populations increase, more food is needed, yet the amount of space available for agriculture stays relatively the same. And therefore, genetic modification is needed to make crops that produce a higher yield using less space, as well as crops that are more resistant to insects and pests, and crops that are able to survive in all types of environments. Despite GMOs allowing easy to access insulin and food at lower costs, many people are still not in favor of GMOs. So why is that? Well, let's compare the pros and the cons. The pros include increased crop yields, higher nutritional value of food, decreased use of pesticides, crops that grow in a wider range of weather, increased speed of growth, longer shelf life of food, and GMOs could help cure or treat disease. The cons are that GMO foods can create allergic reactions and can change your genetics. But I'm glad to inform you that these two cons don't have any evidence that support them, and that they're just rumors spread by misinformation. The only con that does remain standing is that genetic modification can have controversial ethical issues. This includes many topics such as biological warfare and designer babies, which are areas that are continuously being discussed and monitored. Therefore, genetic modification does not pose any threat to people on a daily basis. So what can the takeaway from this information be? Well, genetic modification has brought so many wonders into our world that without it, we would not be able to live in comfort anymore. And the harmful things about GMOs that people tend to spread around are actually not true, and that things verified non-GMO are truly not any better than GMOs. And yes, while it may be scary to sometimes think that scientists have been playing with our food, all we can do is trust that they're doing this with good intentions. So if your flower is genetically modified, you can still make delicious bread.